morning, Lester. Good morning, Dan. How are we today? Very good. Thank it's you. a bit early. It's welcome back to another Sunday morning show. As you can see, we are in a situation where we're trying to keep as much distance as we possibly can. So we've measured out our two meters, and we're trying to do this as best we possibly can, still to keep you um, entertained. Keep them entertained. Week. Absolutely. We've got yeah, to keep going. We've got to keep going. They still need entertaining from you. Yeah. I'm so trying. Um, yeah, this is what we're going to do. Right. Let's get some questions done today, shall we? Yeah. What have you got? I had a question um, last week, which was, what is the greatest achievement or the best thing you've won in golf? Okay. So if you want to answer that one first, what's the oh. best thing you've won? Or what's your best achievement? What is my achievement? best achievement in golf? Other than employing me. That was definitely <laughs> an achievement. How did I even get you? <laughs> you didn't go to choice, I just turned He did, he just rocked up one day. <laughs> um, by the way, I'm working for you, you've got that job, and I'm coming to work for you. <laughs> So what yeah. about you then? So I won the, uh, as an amateur I won the Devon Salva, yeah. um, which was probably like the second best one you could win in Devon, in the behind, county, the, yeah. behind the county championship. Yeah. I was also a youth champion, I think a year or so after you won Yeah, it was, it was pretty close, I think yeah. we went back to back. To yeah, so I won that as well, and then as a pro, the only thing I really won, I was assistant, South West. I was assistant champion, South West Devon assistant champion, and I won the South West Forsens at Yelverton. Very good. So yeah. So I've got a question for you from Slowster. Slowster. Slowster from YouTube. Um, how do you manage your game on days when you just have don't have your best stuff on the day? So how, when you're playing poorly yeah. on the day, how do you manage I mean, your game? I find it more satisfying when I come in yeah. and shoot a score you know, close to par, and, yeah. I, and I feel like I've got no golf swing. I, I couldn't part. Like just getting the ball around the golf course. Yeah. Um, rather than when I'm striking it really good and come in with a low score, I think yeah, yeah. that's part of golf, isn't it? If you can get it yeah. round when you're not playing well, or you I don't agree. feel right. But yeah, I just agree. probably take less risks. You do, yeah, okay. So maybe hit irons off some tees where normally I'd yeah. buy a driver, just because it's more forgiving to hit an iron for me. Yeah. Um, just try and plot your way around. Just try and try and get yourself around that golf course and get in as quickly as possible to sort your golf swing. Yeah. yeah. So for me, I got a, when I was a lot younger, I got a a tip, a couple of tips actually. One from an amateur golfer who was a really good friend of ours, a chap called Bob Knott, who yeah. was a very good golfer, Great England golfer. England international golfer, really really good. And he he kind of he was he helped me when I was growing up to sort of basically learn how to score on your bad days. And he gave me loads and loads of tips throughout the, throughout the years of how to get it around the golf course, basically. Um, but one of the best ones that I got was from uh, another pro. We were playing in a pro-am. I was playing in a pro-am as a sort of 15 year old kid. Um, got invited to play in a pro-am. And I was playing with the pro and um, it was just, he gave me a tip which was that when you, he always kind of summed up his round pretty quickly within the first three holes. He knew whether he was going to be in a position where he was going to be more aggressive or he was going to play more conservative. So what he would do is, if he was like felt like he was playing some good golf and he was um, hitting a few positions that he felt like he was hitting to and, and got it into that position, he would then start to play more aggressively. If he started missing the odd shot, he would literally be focusing on fairways and greens. So he, would be, he wouldn't even be looking at flags, he'd be looking centre of the green and then just plot his way around the golf course from there. And I just think that's not a bad way of trying to, well, certainly just, something just I've done to manage my game moving forward. Just as a side question to that. Yeah. So if you're play, say if you get it to three or five under par, yeah. would you then, and you've got five, six holes to play, would you then play more conservatively just to get your score in at five or six, or would you be looking to go lower and lower and lower? Because I generally, if I get under par, two, three under, and playing well, I think, well, I'll take that. That's a really good score yeah. today. I'm just going to try and make pars. Well, that's a good question because actually, um, and this you have to look at this from a handicap point of view as well. There will be days, and I've had days, and you will have had days, whether you're a 28 handicap, a 36 handicap, or whatever it is, or a scratch golfer, there are days where you'll be on the golf course and you'll be three or four under your handicap, or for me, it'll be three or four under par, and I'm not playing very good golf. But for some reason, somehow, I'm holding the odd putt, or, you know, but I'm not hitting the ball particularly well. In that situation, I am literally trying to just, just nurse my way into the, into the, into the, um, the scorer's hut, basically. Yeah. But when I'm playing well, I'm pressing. I want to be seven under. You know, I'm, I'm yeah. pushing, the last four hours, I'm pushing to make more and more birdies. Mm -hmm. um, from that. So again, that's how you kind of manage your game in that yeah. situation as well. Right, I've got another question for you, Lester. 
And I think this is something we might be able to do, actually. Oh. So this is from, again, from YouTube, and it's from a chap called uh, Ronald Vree, spelled V-R-E-E. -E. So, hello, Ronald. Um, what is the best practice equipment in-house or small garden as we are not able to play golf um, for long period due to the coronavirus? Yeah. So I think now is the time Should where we can... Tips? Yeah. Some tips rather than... Why don't we do a top, top 10? Top 10 tips? Our top 10 tips. We'll do one each as we go along. All right. So we're going to give you now the top 10 tips from myself and Lester whilst you're at home dealing with this coronavirus. So what's your first tip for everybody at home right now? Well, if you've got a little bit of time, it's important to maintain your grips. Um, if you give them a bit of a scrub, so just a bit of soapy water and a nice hard firm brush, right? you will just bring out any dirt, any skin, anything that's come off your hands yeah. during the year and then just get a nice clean towel and give them a good wipe. Yeah, you hear that noise, that like, sort of screeching noise as you're rubbing that up there. It's that's, just, that's more like what we want, isn't it? So they get nice and tacky. tacky. Just brings them back to life really, just, just obviously rubber needs to be maintained and if you want to maintain your grips, I do this probably once a month, Yeah. my grips last probably a year longer than everybody else's, look at that, have a little feel of that. Oh well, no, I can't. No, I know you better not actually know. <laughs> But yeah, it's good as new. Yeah, good as new. Lovely. Tip number one it's from Lester. So tip number two from me is start to learn how to use your hybrid or even a fairway wood for when you're putting at home. So lots of people I see going out on the golf course that, that try, try to use a hybrid to putt with from just off the edge of the green. But what they don't take into consideration when they're doing that on the golf course is that the ball will come off this club just slightly different than it will to your putter. So if I just hit a couple of putts now from the launch monitor, we can see that it's come off the face at 2.4 mile an hour. So the ball speed is 2.4 mile an hour and it's launched at 0.0, .0 off the club face. Now if I make the same stroke with a hybrid, so it's coming off the club face at 3.1 mile an hour. So just a fraction quicker off the face than what I was getting my putter. Therefore you need to practice the fact that it's coming off just a fraction hotter and will just roll out maybe just that little bit further than what your putter will. It also carried one yard, so it's this type of club is to be used when you're coming out of maybe just a little bit of semi-rough, just to get it up and rolling through that sort of fluffy rough or fluffy fairway type of stuff before it gets onto the green. Again, it's just something you can use to practice with when you're at home, just to get an idea of how it feels off the club face. Tip number three, tell us. You've okay. got a putter in your hand. I have, yeah. So obviously we're in a restricted area. So what I'm gonna try and do is put four balls, one, each one going slightly further than the last one, and try and stop it before this area. So see how close you can actually get. Okay, I like that. You like that? Oh, so no, I don't think I've ever done that before. Just speed putting, so I'll hit my first putt. Yeah. So the key, I suppose, is not to get too close to the wall with your no. first couple of putts, I mean, because then you're not you, leaving yourself a lot of bit of space. Ideally, right? if you can make that, so whatever you can make this down, so have a record, so that'll be yep. the furthest point that I've yep. got. You obviously then try and get it closer each time. Okay, keep so going second then. putt, we'll just go past that one. So you're just really working on a bit of touch, feel, and speed. That's probably a little bit hard. Oh, cool. now you've, now now you've jammed up yourself up there, haven't you? Oh, that's chance, good. You might have just chance. recovered yourself there. This will be impressive. First that. take as well. <laughs> First take. Here we go. That. Oh, he's oh, done he's it. Only, he's he's only done, done, it. done it. He's gone and done it. <laughs> so it's a good little drill, though. I like the, like the way you've done that. So all I would do then is mark that area. So that's my first. That's it. You're marking there. it there. So then I'll do it again. Yeah. And I'll try and get the first putt into here. And, and then try work and it the all the way in smaller. there. Nice little like touch that? that. Yeah, I like yeah. that. You're going to keep going I'm now, gonna, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll see you a bit later. See you later. <laughs> so you're going to need a little bit of space for tip number four. And I, what I mean by that is you might have to go outside. So centerness of strike is a key point. A lot of people scatter across the club face. They're not consistent where they start to hit it in the face. Or they might be consistently in the heel or in the toe. So I've just set up two markers here. So. I've set up probably just outside, probably half an inch either side of the club face, either end. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some sort of half swings, but try and work my way between the two markers. So I'm just getting the feeling, I'm trying not to go through and hit any of the markers as I go through. And then as I carry on, I'm going to try and lengthen the swing 
and try and work my way through these two points. So if you find yourself being a toe striker, the chances are you're gonna take out the inside marker. If you're a heel striker, the chances are you're gonna take out the outside marker. So tip number four, just working on centerness of strike. See how quick you can swing it between the two markers and it will certainly help when you get back on that golf course. What are you oh. doing? <laughs> oh. That's, surely that's not a tip. That is not a tip. <laughs> cool, you will hurt yourself. Done. I hope you're not left on your own for too long. I'm done. With all this. <laughs> Tip number six, please, Lester. No, I feel like a bit like a, a short game guru specialist. Ooh, so uh, that's something we could certainly. Uh, <laughs> it's got a ring to it, yeah, that, hasn't it? Like that. that yeah, does have a short, ring like to a short game guru. It. After last week's Sunday morning show, I'm not sure about the old short game guru, but you're getting but, better. Yep. Tip number six. And um, what we've set up, we've set up. We call it the ladder. So it's a little chipping game again in a very restricted space. Maybe do this outside or put something behind to absorb the, the blow if you do catch it slightly thin. Yeah. But all you do is you try and land it in a particular zone. So I really you, like this. You would just chip, so if I'm gonna go first of all, I'm gonna go to zone two. Yeah. I'm gonna try and chip and land it in there. So it's all about landing it, not where it finishes, but where it actually, actually lands. This could be interesting. Oh so. yeah, got that in zone <laughs> one. <laughs> Some another go that one. Short game guru me up. Yeah, there, there you go. go. That was near, that would have it carried on. It been it in would, zone three. No, it's still landing. <laughs> so all you're doing is working on your landing zone. So just vary it up a little bit. Go one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. See how many you land it. See how many times it takes you to get through. Yeah. But you could then vary it. Go one, three, five. So you're just varying your length of your swing and your and your and your stroke. Use different clubs as well. Um, but yeah, we're just working on landing zones. I like that. That's a like really, that. really good one. Quite I simple, think quite not easy enough to people watch or look at their landing point enough, do they? No, it's when just... they're uh, when they're out doing their short game. So this is a really, really good one, and in a really limited space. I mean, I know I know I'm not someone who's renowned chipper, but I see too many people who play a chip shot and land it on a down slope or land it on an upslope, and then they're surprised at how it responds. Whereas if you're good enough and you've got the ability, you would fly it over those areas and try and always land it on the flat. You can judge the bounce better and you can predict what's gonna to happen to your ball. Tip number six. So tip number seven. We're on seven, aren't we? Yeah, comes after six normally. Seven. Does, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Still, we're back on sentence of strike, but this time it's with putting. Now this is a tip that you probably all know, but how many times do you actually work on it? Striking that ball at the middle of the putter or as close to the middle as we possibly can. Simple tip, at home, on the carpet, you don't need lots of space, you need a small area, not a problem. Just set up a couple of coins either side of your golf ball here, try and get it as close to the actual outside of the heel and the toe position on the putt and that will just help you just centre that putter as it comes through. So all I'm going to do here is just set that ball up right in the middle of the two coins either side there and then I'm just literally gonna hit the putt and just try and make sure that I can keep focusing on not hitting those coins as I kind of come through there. Ah. Right. So I'm a bit of a toe striker, so for me, I'm always struggling to miss the inside coin there when I hit my putt. So again, it's just gonna give me something to work on this uh, tricky time. What are you doing now? This is tip this, number eight. Tip number eight. This may or may not work. But <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> Please comment below, does it actually work? Because I'm literally just making this up as I go along. <laughs> but I've um, located some toilet roll that wasn't being needed or used. Well, it's like gold so, dust, that yeah, stuff this is gold dust. So this is unused toilet roll. Good. I wouldn't use used toilet roll to do this one. Okay. So what I've done is got about 10 foot of it, yeah. rolled it out, I've yeah. put my ball on it. Okay. And I'm gonna try and putt the ball and keep it on there as long as possible. Right. Okay, so Come let's on see if we can do this. Let's see if so this actually works. So it's got to stay right to the end. Not first oh, go. there you go. Not first go. <laughs> Oh my word. I'm pretty sure that, that it's, it does come off there occasionally. Does it? Well, I'll, I'll just hit a bad patch, shall I? Yeah. yeah, so you do have so, to be pretty yeah. skilled to keep it on there, don't you? So there you go. Oh, the, there you go. Tip number eight. The toilet of... roll challenge. See how many times you can get it along there to keep it right to the end in a row. Right, tip number nine. You need a little bit of space for this. So 
I would suggest you'd either be outside or in a room that's big enough to be able to cope with actually swinging a golf club. So we're going to try and change swing direction. So trying to get this feeling of swinging it more into out or out to in. If you do it with one arm, so whether you're doing it with your right hand or your left hand, it doesn't really matter in this particular um, little drill, but all I'm going to do is try and get the feeling of swinging this club down that line where I set up those sticks. So I'm going to aim myself basically square to the target, which is down the middle here, but my sticks are aiming more out to the right hand side. It just gives me a feeling of trying to just change my swing direction slightly, which then in turn will give me my swing path of moving more into out. Again, if I wanted to move the path more out to in, again, again, I'm going to set my sticks up down the left hand side. Sort of left hand I'm putting in my pocket and then I'm just getting the feeling of swinging it one arm swings, trying to get that club head to just work between these two sticks. Again, all it's doing is giving me an idea of trying to change my swing direction, which again in turn tries to then move my swing path more out to in. Once you're quite comfortable with what you've been doing with your one arm, then you put two hands on the club and then try and get the same feelings that you've been getting with that one arm swing. It's just a little drill that can help you with maybe moving your swing path as an idea in your mind of trying to get that club to work a little bit more into out or even out to in. I think you've got the wrong ball. It's bigger, isn't it? It's a lot bigger. So everyone has generally got a football or another round ball. Um, it's quite soft, so it won't do much damage. So we're going to work on the release. Okay. So all we're going to do... In the back garden. In the back garden, one. yeah. yeah. Get the ball, okay, get into your position as if you were going to hit a golf shot. Into your so ready position. I'm going to take that ball back as a, as a backswing. Yeah. And then I'm going to release it forward, so. Okay. Oh yeah, good pass. You could be a rugby player, Bernie. So all we're doing is just working on where we're releasing it. If we release it too too late, yeah. as we come through, it's going to go left. It's going to go left, yeah. Okay, and if we release, release it too early, it will go right. Yeah. So we're trying to actually get it down the line, so it's the same as if you had a club head or club face, you're trying to rotate it slightly through from the inside and then release it. Okay, the chances are, if they release it a little bit too early, yeah. the chances are it's going to go sort of low and to the, down into the floor, isn't it? Whereas if they release it too late, they might sort of flick it high and left. Is Could that, be, is yeah. that, is that mean, what you kind of would see? It's just an idea depends, of giving them an idea of what's right and what's wrong, oh, I suppose. You'd want to release it down the target line, wouldn't you? Mm, absolutely. So but the key there is obviously to try and get your body to turn as much as you possibly can as well. It's good as well because it will work on the same, same movements you're making during the golf swing. So you're still turning and rotating back, coming forward and releasing. So yeah. it's, it's just working on that turn, that twist, that movement that you should have in the golf swing. So when you do play again, you should still feel quite flexible and supple. Okay, just give us one more as it is the final tip. Go on, give, show us that again. Okay. Down the one line, the final this. tip. This is, this is this. it, all right? right. Power, power. Yes, no, great look, look release. The follow through. You follow through as well? Great, re that's a lovely no, release. Not. Well done, you. <laughs> God, I'm exhausted. Huh? God, I wouldn't want to do those tips every day, <laughs> would you? Last question. Last, go then, one more. Last question. Got time for one more. We've got time for one more. Hi Dan, I have a question. I frequently keep asking myself, should I have a custom fit for new clubs or more lessons? I only play once a week as my scores go up and down around a 20 handicap. And this is from a chap called David Bates and he's uh, commented on YouTube, so thank you very much David. What do you think? 100% do both. See your local PJ Pro, yeah. he will help you out. Um, so yeah, definitely equipment and obviously um, lessons. Yeah. Lessons will help, definitely, yeah. so they can point you in the right direction. Yeah. Well, I think, I think a lesson and a fitting go hand in hand. I'm not a big fan of people just going to get fit based on their current golf swing. I know it's something that a lot of people want to maybe do and they sort of separate the, the two, but I just think having a fitting off a pro who you're kind of working with is such a good thing. You know, a lot of people that come here for lessons with me, I'm generally messing about with equipment with them as well as, as we're going through the lesson. So I'm always sort of checking their equipment whilst we're going through, see what their dynamic lie especially like, how much delivery loft they've got, all those sorts of things. So I think having a fitting is important. Having a lesson is, if not more important, but I have done lessons with players where we've really, really struggled to get I don't know, whether we're, whether we're trying to take loft off a player and they're really, really struggling, um, getting them into the right equipment can maybe help that situation for them. They don't have a lot of time to practice, so 
getting them into a, into a, into a club that's going to work for them along that as well is going to definitely help. Right, I think that's it, isn't it? Yeah. That's the end of our Sunday morning show. So thank you very much, Lester. Thank you very much for coming and seeing us. Um, obviously, be safe out there, coronavirus, but we look forward to catching up with you next Sunday.